Hello, Ms. Quevedo, how are you? I'm fine, and you? Pretty good, thank you. Uh, how did the assignment go for you? Mm, I think it was good, but I did it handwritten, so it was easier for me to, you know, um, do the whole thing. But I think it was good, I think so. <laughs> good morning, Rodrigo. Good morning. Good morning, good morning. Good morning Rodrigo. Let's see. There you go. Good morning. Good morning, guys. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Hello, guys. <clears throat> All right. Let's see. So, that is chill. García Morales Us. Good morning. Good morning. Who, who just came in? Who said good morning? Brenda. Yes, good morning. Uh, let's see. I'm taking attendance real quick. Um, <clears throat> okay. Uh, Wint is already here. Okay. Buongiorno. A wrong classroom, Sanders. Uh, <laughs> 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 All right. Cotton and Sanders are already here. Good morning. Good morning. Um, okay. See, Contreras, Orbo. Good morning. Good morning. <clears throat> All right. I'll give one more minute and then we start. Let's see, by a show of hands while we wait, how many of you are currently teaching? Okay, and how many of you are teaching uh, online? Like you have virtual classes with your students online. Okay, well, that's interesting. It, it's, it's a whole different world, right? Yeah. Um, hold on, let me, let me do this. Lucero, you just came, let's see. Um, right. Ah, I already put you present, let's see. And Vides just showed up, okay. Let's, let's start this one off then. Um, so can someone tell me, how you guys did um, for your assignment this week. How, how did that feel? So, so someone, uh, let's see, Garcia, can you give us your experience? Can you tell us a little bit about it? Yeah, I think, I don't know. <laughs> it was difficult for me because I didn't know what to do. <laughs> like, to, I didn't know what to, how to do it exactly i had to watch a lot of a lot of videos and rewatch the last class in order to to do the assignment it was fun because i mean it was really interesting to see how to connect everything in the sentence but sometimes i had like some self-doubt of what i was doing and i think that was like the hardest part of doing the assignment because i wasn't sure but yeah Right, that makes sense, makes sense. And probably that's, go ahead, Ms. Mendes. Uh, Rodrigo, hi. Yes, um, well, 
No, M Mendes, Andrea. Oh, sorry. You, you raised your hand. As well. Yes. Sorry. Go ahead. <laughs> yes. so I'm, I'm uh, you something that I, like what Andrea Garcia said, uh, yeah, I had like, I was like all the time wondering do I need, uh, because of the rules that you have with linking the lesion and, and I was like hesitant to use like, okay, do I use flapping or do I follow the rule or do, like in some cases, okay? So I was like hesitant to do it. And one thing that I really liked was the, like the forum, the reflection of how, how do we know or how do we feel uh, when like reflecting on our, our accent and how we speak in English. And I, I really like that activity because like it really got me thinking of in which situations I think that I am comfortable speaking in English and in which situations I really like uh, get all warm up and I'm not able to to do what I know what, that I can do that I can do it okay so right um, was it was it difficult like this is this is a question for everyone was it difficult giving yourself like a grade did any one of you of you think like go ahead mendes go i think it's not difficult to give yourself a grade because at some point you're conscious of what you're learning and how do you speak and what you have difficulties with and what's your like strength so huh? hopefully hopefully <laughs> yeah, you're aware of those things Right. I think most of us are, and I think you're conscious enough to know where you're standing. At least for me, I know I have to improve so many things because living abroad for three years messed up my English because I was living with people from everywhere that I had to like change the way I was speaking because many of them, they didn't have like a good level of English. So I ended up speaking like them so they would understand what I was saying. So I messed up my accent and many things happened. But you know, the other thing is that with exercise five, I had a little bit of difficulties, which was the question about Indian English. Because I kept on doing like the first, the American, like the... Mm -hmm. The contour, uh -huh, the, yeah. the intonation pattern. Yeah, the intonation pattern. And I wasn't able to actually do the, the second one. So I was like, I don't understand. So it was a little bit difficult. It was tricky because if you don't know how someone who speaks Indian English sounds like it's tricky, but yeah, I mean, it wasn't that difficult. It was just very long, I guess. Cause like Andrea said, you have to think about so many things at once. You don't know if you follow the rules or if you follow linking, deletion, assimilation. So it was just long, but not that difficult. I think at least for me. Okay. Um, I, I thought I, I hope I, I was hoping I wouldn't forget this. So I'm going to say do not ask before I do, but there's there's a tip if you actually want to um, improve your pronunciation, and it sounds like a really stupid tip, but it's actually true. Um, speak your native language, like the group of the target language, your, how they speak your language. O sea, speak Spanish like a gringo. Entonces, uh, tienen que entender que cuando cambian el, um, uh, uh, la forma de hablar, um, esas ideas que están siendo en su boca um, hacen que esas ideas vayan para el inglés también. Um, and it's so stupid, right? And, and it's, it sounds ridiculous, but it actually helps. Um, it, it is... Um, it, it, if you can do, if you can pass off um, your accent, your like, if you can pass off like a gringo speaking Spanish, uh, then um, your your English can improve. I don't know why, but it it does. It it's I, I this is not my idea. I saw this in a book. Um, it was a book of activities. So it. Feel free to make fun of gringo speaking Spanish. It will improve your English. Um, all right, so let's let's get to it today. Uh, we have a lot of things to do today. Que raro. Um, and what, one thing that we will do differently today is we're going to use Pear Deck. I don't know if you're familiar with Pear Deck, uh, but eventually you will need a smartphone 
to be able to work with some things that we're going to do today um, so that I can see your answers. As a matter of fact, you can take out your iPhone, go to your browser and go to join P D P as in potato D as in day join PD.com and just stay there. Um, and uh, I'll let you know when, when we start. All right. Join PD. Join PD. Let me, let me write Is it. Is it the one that has a little P? Pear? Pear? Yes, a little pair. That's what it's called pair deck. Join PD.com. All right. Just go there and, um, and just wait. Okay. Oh, yeah. I see what it is. Okay. All right. Bye. All right. So, I'll use that as a secondary uh, form of asking you questions during the presentation. But for the time being, we're going to go straight off to, oh, no, actually, no, we're not going to do this. We're going to do one thing first, real quick. We're going to look at your assignment uh, on, um, on Canvas real quick, just so that there are no um, questions or actually just to make sure that, that Everything is pretty much uh, done. Um, so hold on, there we go. So, so this is what you guys did. Um, this, this is the assignment, right? Okay, so um, exercise one, um, we are going to look at closer today, all right? So if, by the way, if you have your, your assignment today with you, that would be of great help to you during class. Um, exercise two, we will also look at closer today. Exercise four, well, that is a uh, wonderful exercise um, where you had to transcribe actual speech. Um, and there's one very important question there, which is uh, what's the difference between a written version and the transcript? And basically, the written version does not contain connected speech while the transcript should contain connected speech. Um, well, we're gonna look at that a little bit today as well, but that's pretty much the idea, the difference between, like for example, if you actually transcribe what is said, the way in which it's said is not necessarily transcribed, um, it's not necessarily put in a written script, just, I, I mean, like, the palatalization, the linking, the deletions that people do are not a part of that script. Yes, Ms. Mendes. Rodrigo, I have a question because I read in the instructions that you had to transcribe phonetically. It didn't say like in connected speech. So I didn't apply connected speech. Like I transcribed just like uh, phonetically. Yeah, just the without using so, linking. But you had to transcribe the conversation, which means was with you had to transcribe what how people were saying it, the pauses they were making and the pauses they were not making in between words, uh, how they said, for example, if they said, what you do, um, you don't transcribe what did you do because he didn't actually say or she didn't actually say, what did you do? But that person said, what you do? So that's what you're supposed to transcribe. You're supposed to transcribe the spoken version, not the written version. Uh, you guys are stuck, right? Um, let's see. All right. Um, so it, it, I hope that makes sense, what I just said. All right. And then um, number, uh, letter D, uh, do exercise five in the book. The point of that exercise is what happens, I'm going to stop this. Uh, so what happens when you use intonation incorrectly? Can someone tell me? Can I tell you my answer? Yes, Ms. Orba, go ahead. What I wrote was that it would not be perceived as a question, but as a command. Yes, and, and what happens if you're not asking a question, but you're making a command? You gonna sound rude? Yes, perfectly. That's exactly it. Um, and, and this is a very important point um, for intonation. When you, for example, um, when you use 
segmentals, consonants and vowels, when you use segmentals incorrectly, um, there's a breakdown in communication because people don't understand what you're saying or, or you're, you, you, can, you confuse them. When you use super segmentals, which are stress and intonation incorrectly, especially intonation, um, sometimes people um, understand you perfectly, but they understand the wrong message. Okay, so, so you might be, um, like if you've ever been, I, I think I mentioned this last week, um, if you've ever been in a conversation, someone says something and, and then there's a silence and you're like, wait, are you asking me or are you telling me? Um, that, that, that's sort of a breakdown in communication. But for example, in this case, um, when you're saying, you're, when you're asking a question, but you come off as rude, sounding like you're making a command, the person understands that you need to close the door and understands that you're rude. Even if that wasn't what you were supposed to trying to get across, right? Uh, but they, they get off the wrong message. That is called, that's not miscomprehension, that's called misunderstanding. And if you've ever been in a relationship, you should know what this means. Especially when you say, no mi amor, no es eso lo que yo quise decir. Right? Okay, so uh, that's misunderstanding. What The words that come out of your mouth it, take a, on a different new message to go into the other person's. And that usually happens with intonation. That's why sarcasm is so tricky because intonation does play into sarcasm, right? And people get the wrong message. Ms. Mendez, you had a question. Yes, um, can you repeat what you were saying before? It's just that for some reason, the internet in my house is just not working. So I had to connect to my mobile phone, but I had to leave and then come back in the middle of whatever you were saying. Sorry. Um, just basically, I just said the answer. The answer is, uh, actually, Ms. Orville said the answer, which was, Ms. Orville, can you say it again? Yes, the, instead of a question, it's gonna sound like a command and it's gonna come off as a rude person. Oh, no, yes, I could hear this. I was just talking about the question that I did previously. Ah, ah, was... okay. Um, that you're, basically what I said is you have to transcribe what people are saying. Um, so uh -huh. if, if the written script says, what did you do? But the person said, what you do? Then you have to transcribe what you do, not what did you do? And that's the difference between the written and the spoken. There, uh, it's two different versions. Because I got confused because I think it was in exercise one, you said transcribe the sentences A through F in connected speech. Which so gives a wonderful confused. segue to do what we're going to do next. Okay. So I got confused in exercise uh, four because it just says transcribe phonetically. So I just didn't use connected speech. But transcribe phonetically? What? what? I, mean, I, did, I transcribed phonetically, but I didn't use like... A, how can I explain? As if you were making a di dictation, like word by word. Yeah. Sí, pues. Pero sí, era transcribed phonetically, the, um, the, the spoken version. And then that's why I was asking what's the difference between the spoken and the written version. Yeah, because actually I wrote about in the differences that my transcript was just phonetic. It didn't provide any like um, connected speech. So it doesn't provide a way it should be said in a conversation. So I didn't do that. But it does say uh, transcribe the conversation. It doesn't say transcribe the script. Oh, okay. So I, yeah, I just, yeah, never mind. All right, let's 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 move on and let's do this because this is this is it's still me oyo el asunto and this is what uh, this is exercise one and three that we're going to look at, and I want us to look at it um, uh, not slowly but uh, in depth. Okay, so this is stuff that you had to do in, in your exercise. Well, actually, I've done more than you had you had to do in your exercise. Um, so um, we did this one last week. Okay, so right now I'm only I'm only going to go and look at the connected speech version. Okay, so do you want a cup of coffee? Um, and hear how I'm saying that. Do you want a cup of coffee? Um, I'm not saying, do you want a cup of coffee, right? Um, I'm scrunching that up. So the first thing that I want, I asked you to do is um, 
oh, that this should have like a question mark here. Um, the ¿Qué estoy haciendo, mucha? Can someone tell me what I did? Deletion of the word or the sentence? Uh, function words. Function words. Function words. Bah. So if I if I transcribe function words, all function words in theory should be um, schwa's. See? Bah. Pero esto no es connected speech. Esto solo es transcription. All right? Connected speech is when I finally get these things together. Y pueden haber espacios o pueden no haber espacios. It, it really depends. So, when you put all these things together, how does it sound? When I say, do you want a cup of coffee? Do you want a cup of coffee? There's no pauses there. Um, so, so, I decided to transcribe it like this. Well, actually, I left the pause. I left the pause here. Okay, but a micro pause apparently, All right? But that says, if you read it, it says, "Do you want a cup of coffee? Cup of coffee." So that. Wait, what if I transcribed it differently? Está bien. There are different versions and different ways of saying things, right? So, like for example, like what did you do? Could be what did you do, or it could be what you do. Right, so there's different versions of doing the same thing. Someone speaking, who? Yeah, I'm sorry. So it depends a little bit on the inflection of voice. So it would depend on how it is being said, right? Not necessarily. Not, not inflection, but but speed, like the speed at what at, at which you're saying it, and also your specific way of speaking. Uh, okay. Different groups, like for example, um, and and I'm not. Uh, like for example, different races will have different pronunciations of the same mm -hmm. English. Like for example, if you are watching a film with uh, African Americans, um, their accent is very different and they will scrunch up the sentences differently uh, than non-African uh, Americans, right? So it, it really depends on what group you're coming from, how fast you're speaking, who you're speaking to, Usually, the more formal you get, the more you separate your words. The mm -hmm. less formal you get, the more you you join them up. All right. Like more casual speech. Uh huh. Uh huh. Okay. Yeah. Okay. All right. So then I said, "Would you like cream and sugar?" Entonces, uh, content words: boom, 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 boom. No, no, boom, boom. Yes. So in theory, those should be. Um, uh, those should be schwa's. I decided not to write a schwa here, more like a, that, that would be more like a minor word stress, okay? But this is not connected speech. Again, connected speech would be, how would you say that? Would you like cream and sugar? O se dice and sugar. No, like for example, do you say rock and roll? No, inclusive, how do you write rock and roll? Rock and mm, roll. Why, does, why is it written like that? Because you say and rock and roll, right? So anyways, connected speech is this. I'm sorry, oh, that's what I was asking because I added this little V, the wood because I didn't uh -huh. see the first one, but I see that it was complete, I'm sorry. Right there, that's this. This is connected speech, All right? Um, this that's happening right here. That's palatalization, um, which is on page um, eighty-seven, I think, of your book. So that is a very cool version. Could you have left spaces? Yes, you could have left spaces if you wanted to. Um, like for example, if I say, "Would you like cream and sugar?" Um, I feel that there are no spaces there. That's why I decided to transcribe that. Uh, but definitely you need to drop this D. This D needs to be dropped because you don't pronounce it when you're actually saying it. Um, this definitely happens. Like if you're, if you're not doing it, then you, like, for example, Americans would do it. 
they wouldn't say would you they would say would you right um someone's gonna ask me what happened to this k there's only one k there's two k's here but here there's only one k it's the same k you don't pronounce that k twice you know say like cream you say like cream see pero me volé una mm -mm, no the two of them are the same one okay i'll, I'll come back to this later bueno questions so far no but let's carry on where did he go last night so dun, 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 namas. okay in this case i left he because if you you, you don't say ha huh, ha huh, you say he all right um and i left did um like that and I, I've said, like, for example, when we're looking at reduced vowels, well, we talk about the schwa and sometimes the e, all right? Um, the, the e doesn't play by the rules. So this is uh, function words, um, but let's talk about connected speech. How do you, how do you say that? Um, there's probably different versions, but this is one. Where did he go last night? Where did he go last night? Alguien me va a preguntar, what if I did, where did he um, go last? A ver, hagámoslo así. Night. This is another version of saying it. Where did he instead of so where did he instead of where did he where did he go? I would have probably said where did he go? Rodrigo. Yes. Could you pronounce the first one but instead of a flapping with just a D? Where did he? Where did he? Where did he go? Okay. Where, where'd he go? Where'd he go? Okay. Thank you. I can say, where did he go? Where did he go? I see. Pero, pero there's a flap. There's a flap there. ¿Por qué hay un flap? Porque I'm taking, like, for example, in both cases, there's a flap. Uh, this is more stressed than this. ¿Por qué? Because this is a content word and this is a function word um and so th there's more stress here and when a t or a d is between two vowels and the first one is stressed or more stressed uh than than the second one then flapping usually occurs but aquí hay un error ve that t if you transcribe that t son cuentos mucha you don't pronounce that t there no you don't pronounce it you don't say last night you say last night and what happens? What happens is both the T and the N are both alveolar. So when you put them together, your tongue is at the alveolar position, but it doesn't do a stop on a nasal. It just drops the stop and does the nasal. Your, your tongue is preparing for the next uh, sound. So that's what happens. Last night. Okay? I'm sorry. Questions so far, Mucha? Questions, comments? Easy, difficult piece of cake, and Garcia? I was, <laughs> the thing that I didn't do is that I didn't connect all the words, like just one. The, and I, I didn't understand that the first time and now it makes sense. I don't know why I didn't do it, but now I, I get it. We have to connect all the words. All, all the sentence in just one word, always, or? No, no, no. There, like for example, if the sentence has a comma, there needs to be a pause. Um, okay. Like for example, if you're doing lists of words uh, and there's a comma between the words, there, there's pauses there. But think about how people actually speak. Mm -hmm. and for example, let's look at that sentence that I just said, how people actually speak. 
I'm not saying how people actually speak. They're not separate words. They're all words that are coming together and they're just being part of the same thing, right? Um, and then pause. When we actually speak, pause. Um, we sort of take different words and put them together and, and some words we don't. So we sometimes do like little pauses, but this is the principle behind um, German writing. Does anyone know how Germans write? No? Uh, yes. Ms. Orbo. Yes, very, very appropriate. Yes, tell us about German writing. But about the rules or? About, about like words, like words. Um, <laughs> do, do you know? Do you speak German? Yes, but I, I don't know what you want me to tell. <laughs> How, like when you write words, when you write words in German, are words short? No. They're all huge, put together. Yeah. See, like for example, Farfeknugen, that's a word. Uh, and I remember well, that, if you remember well, that from... Words words. Are two words together or they have a meaning on their own. See, they, they, they do like these compound words. Yeah, or la last names do that too, like Schumacher would be the maker of shoes. So, so it's like, but if you see sometimes some words are like, some German words are like, like huge. And, yeah. and, and it's because of that, it's because when we actually say them, uh, we, we say them together, we don't say them separately. Um, Americans write their words separately, um, but when we all speak, even when we speak Spanish, we put our words together, like buir, right? Buir, what is buir? Is one word, but it means voy a ir, right? So naturally we put words together. Um, and, and that's what happens here. And, and connected speech is that, is how do we connect the words that are in, in a sentence? Ahora, para bajarles el estrés a todos, I'm not giving you points for exercise one or exercise three, all right? I'm just giving you points for exercise uh, four and five, nada más, okay? So, so, eh, relaxez-vous. Eh, so let's see, let's, let's carry on. All right, so no further questions, um, because right now you were, you're just sort of learning how to do it, um, but we're gonna go and, and finish uh, what we're doing. So, um, and, and after you learn, I'll, I'm giving you another exercise um, and then I'm going to give you an exercise for points. So, mientras, relax, okay? Relax and learn right now. All right. Give her a hand. That's how you say it. Give her a hand. Someone want to give me a, a, an idea of how you say this? Give her a, give her a hand. Aha, give her a hand, right? Um, aquí, here, the, the H disappears, and the H sometimes disappears in connected speech. So I'm just going to do this real quick. This and this are both uh, function words. So if I put it together in connected speech, you say, give her a hand. Okay. Ahí está, the age disappeared. See that? Y este por qué no desapareció? Um, that's a content word. That H is really important for meaning. Whereas the H in this function word is not really important. So it, it disappears. Same thing with the he. He is a function word. Uh, that's why the H disappeared. Does it always disappear? Um, not necessarily. And it depends also how you say it, but very usually it will, I don't know if that you can say that very usually, I don't know, uh, but usually, uh, very likely it will disappear. Okay, um, let's, let's do the next one. Um, he can go to the store, but she can't. Okay, so I'm not gonna mark the function words, but here we go. That's function words. Okay, like I, you see there, there's schwa. So, so it's not the, sorry, 
the. Sí se puede pronunciar así, pero eh, in connected speech you usually do that. That's why I'm doing it here. Okay? Okay. So. I get the map there to the store, to the. Ah, it, it, it can be, yes. Uh, let, let me just say, let me just show you how I would have said it how, or how I say it. And that's what I say. He can go to the store, but she can't. See, there's a space here, Ms. Garcia. See, be, why? Because this is a compound sentence and I sort of need a space uh, naturally to, for it to make sense. So he can go to the store, but she can't. But she can't, let's say that, all right? Um, question by Ms. Quevedo, can you say, uh, I look at this, I said, he can go to the store, he can go to the store. That's another way of saying it. You can also say, uh, to the store, to the store. He can go to the store. That's fine. Um, this is, this sounds to me a little bit more African American um, than mainstream American English. Um, but it also happens. I mean, I'm not saying only black people use it, um, but it also happens. All right. Um, so is this a flap? Is this a D or a T? I, I would accept a T if you, if you wrote a T, right? Because that's how you say it. Um, but it, it depends. But this is one possible version of, of what you're doing. So this is one version. Okay. Um, let's do the last one and then I'll open up uh, for comments. Um, she can go to the store, but he can. Um, <clears throat> so that's function words and connected speech. What I asked you to do was connected speech. Los function words, a mí me sirven nada más para saber what's happening between like separated speech and connected speech. See? So for example, what happened here? A flap, the T turned into a flap. I can see there. What happened here? N nothing happened, but they got bunched up together, right? That, por eso lo hago, because it helps me uh, see what's happening between one version and the next, okay? But um, let's stop this. Right. So, sorry, can I ask you a question? You can ask me a question. Teacher to teacher. Um, when do you think it is okay to start teaching these to kids? I mean, most of my kids are not native speakers or their parents trained them or anything. So when is it okay to start saying, okay, this is the way you have to write it, but in real spoken English, this is what happens. When is it that they are prepared to understand it? Or is it just that we have to work on our pronunciation in order to, for them to get it just like that? Or do we have to explain it? Okay, um, pronunciation is taught two ways. Um, it's taught through um, spoken, like for example, when you ask students to repeat um, and to repeat after you and to, say those things. And it's also taught through um, awareness of facts. So one is, again, practice, awareness. You remember those? Yeah. So you need those two things, uh, awareness and practice. <clears throat> awareness can be made through direct teaching or through pointing things out. And then, so for example, if a student says, it is, you say, no, say, it's and the student says it is and you, no, no no it's like there's no vowel there it's okay. it's good it's good yes that's very good you just taught him there that's that's connected speech you're teaching them connected speech so at what point should you start teaching that um i would say um at, at what age do do kids start speaking my kids any kid or maybe a year and a half, two. So, so about then you should start teaching about pronunciation, um, if if you want the native pronunciation. But you're not going to take the two-year-old and you're not going to say, um, "Look, according to the rules of pronunciation, 
you know, <laughs> because of connected speech, you need to reduce your vowels. So the way, no, o sea, mimicking. Yes. So, so you're always teaching pronunciation, pero tampoco you're not correcting mistakes. One thing is teaching pronunciation, and another thing is correcting mistakes. Um, you're always teaching pronunciation if, if you're being a good model, if you're asking students to say things in a certain way. And, and just, for example, just saying in English, you say, you say it like this, blah, 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 repeat it after me. Ah, blah, blah. So, so they, they sort of figure it out um, like little by little. Aha. Uh -huh. See? And then, for example, uh, in English, you say, what'd you do? And then the student says, what did you? No, 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 no. Would you do? What did you? No, no, no. Would you do? Listen, I'm, I'm just putting out. So there's, they start. Would you? Would you? Would, would, otra vez, teacher. Right? So they're learning pronunciation. But then what, as, they, as they become older, um, you can actually start teaching rules and start explaining why these things happen. Um, I, I wouldn't do that uh, before fifth grade. Um, and sometimes, sometimes if the pronunciation is really good, there's no need to explain it, right? Um, but it, it will all be- they got it in a younger age, for example. If they got it at a younger age, there's no need to explain vowel reduction. Um, but at the same time, um, well, okay, okay, I have two people with hands up. Let, let's go there and I'll, I'll say the rest later. Mendes and then Sanders. Um, as like something to like help answer uh, Ana Raquel's question is that that's why it's important for schools, especially in preschool to have like phonics program because in that way students can get like can not only learn English, but also to focus on the sounds and how to produce them. For example, I remember my students, uh, like when uh, I had them in prepa and they were, uh, they went to fifth, uh, first grade. I remember the teacher telling me, oh my God, all of your students are able to say three and three without uh, mixing those words up. Why? Because I took the time to practice with them. Like, okay, let's say three, 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 like, uh, to, uh, and I will tell them, like, the, uh, put your tongue on the tip of your uh, teeth and, and things like that. And, for example, like, that's why uh, I was, like, familiar with uh, boweling, lengthening, because that's something that we do with kids. Like, we, uh, I remember that my students actually knew that there were long vowels and short vowels. And, for example, I used to have, like, a little stick with a letter E, and for example, if I, I had the word uh, can, it's okay, so I wouldn't put the stick and they say can. And if I put the stick with the letter E, uh, cane. So those are things that if they uh, like start to get exposed at a very early age, they're able to like get it. And that helps you in like in the other stages. Uh, so teachers don't have like those problems like to correct if they are like taught well when they are learning uh, in preschool and even at home, I have Thank students that have very good I'm gonna cut you because we need to go on, okay? Yes. Uh, Sanders, you got like 30 seconds. All right, um, so I would just say really quick with that, uh, I think it's more of an issue with adults than it would be with kids. Um, at least like from my experience, when I was learning English, uh, I was seven years old and we there were things that it was mostly learned through mimicking. Uh, but it wasn't as extenuous as it was as it is now, and it was mostly just pronouncing words correctly, not so much connected speech. In, the, in that case, uh, like from what I did, it was just mimicking how they spoke. Uh, but it wasn't like someone actually sat me down and like told me like this is how you should say it. It was just like as you are exposed to it, that's just the way that you go along with it. But the important part is like knowing how to, like at least from my perspective, from, from my experience, it was more learning how to pronounce each word correctly. Uh, and then the connected speech just kind of came along with it as you were exposed to it constantly. See, uh, teachers, uh, sorry, students uh, usually mimic their teachers. So however teachers say things, um, it, students will learn uh, to, to repeat right even if you're not asking them to repeat they're gonna they're gonna say the things like you say them 
Um, so when they learn it, they're, they're going to say, so if you, if you have, if your pronunciation is not good, then they're going to learn how to pronounce it not good. Right. Uh, so that's, that's one of the reasons why also we need sort of like to learn for ourselves, but also for our children. Right. Um, okay. So let's, Let's see, let's, let's carry on. And um, any questions about uh, any of these exercises? No? Piece of cake. Bueno, a ver, mucha. Um, okay, here we go. Ahora sí. Um, we are going to go here. Smartphone time. Since I can't see your screens while I'm presenting, um, all right. Vides is in, Puente is in, Mendes is in. Mucha, ¿y por qué no ponen si están alegres, aburridos o felices o...? Ok. All right, 10 students, 11 students. Okay. 15, no mucha, tenemos más de 15. 17, okay. Almost. Eh. All right. Almost, one more. There we go. I think we I think everyone's in there. Let's see how many how many are we? 21. Uh, sorry, can I see the code again? Yeah. Thank you. There we go. There we go. We're set. So here we go. Um, so first question. So we're going to look at sentence stress and intonation. Do you want a cup of coffee? Um, on your cell phone, what is the sentence stress? Rodrigo. See? I'm sorry, I could not look at the code because uh, I had to come on into the Zoom meeting again. It, it took me out. Okay, hold on. Let me go back. That's the code. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Okay. Um, All right, I see your answers. The rule for sentence stress is what? Someone, please. Raising falling? No, it's just intonation. The rule for sentence stress is? Isn't it length and loudness? No, 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 the rule, not, not the description. Oh, it's a content word that uh, like emphasizes or like the main idea of the sentence? But what's the regular rule? What what content word? The, the end, the last word of the yeah. sentence. Okay, the last major word stress of the sentence will be the sentence stress. That's why I asked if it's coffee or coffee. So the last major, the last major word stress will land on the last content word. See, last content word is coffee. So. Which of these two syllables is the major word stress? The last one because it's a question. Coffee? Do you want a cup of coffee? No, it is the cough? first one. The first one. Coffee. Si, sí, verá. So this is the stress syllable. And coffee? ¿Cuál es el stress syllable de coffee? Co. Aba. Co. So that's the major word stress of coffee. 
okay? okay? So that's where you place the major, sorry, the main sentence stress. That's where you place the main sentence stress in the last major word stress. And the last major word stress, así solo por dato, will land on the last content word, okay? So if you were going to draw a contour or draw the intonation pattern, the intonation pattern should look like this. Okay. And this, what, what, what's this called? Hold on, wait. Next question. On your phone, Pear Deck. What is the name of this pattern? Gaitan and Mendez, change your answer. Mendez de Leon or Mendez Garcia? Mendez Julie. Morales, you're also wrong. Vives, you're also wrong. See, I'm not telling you what you're. Sanders? Oh, you changed it. Good. Vides, again, change it. Juarez. Who's Gabriela Juarez? That's uh, Puente, right? Uh, no. no, sorry, it's me. Who says me? Um, Escobar. Escobar. It's okay. just, that's my email. Yeah, sorry. Okay, that's okay. Um, change your answer. Perdomo, change your answer. Vides, are you just guessing? I'm sorry, I don't know. <laughs> I really don't know. But what's happening to that little arrow there at the end? Where is it going? What direction is it going? Up. Oh. All right. Skies. So that's called final rising. 19 of you got it right. Okay. Okay. Let's do the next one. Question on Pear Deck. Um, what is the sentence uh, stress, the, the main sentence stress or the major sentence stress? Where does it go? We already discussed the rule. Vamos a ver. Mendez, Mendez, and Us. Choose again. Vamos a ver. Lopez. How do you say the last word in that sentence? Um, sugar? Yes, very good. Um, how do you, where where is the where is the stress in the first or the second syllable? I said second. Sugar. Oh uh, no. It's on the first. Okay. I'm no, just asking. Um, so so here we go. Um Parada. You're the only one. Think about it. A ver, para. Tell me what what the rule is for sentence stress. I don't remember. I didn't. I pay just attention. said it. I said it five <laughs> minutes ago. Wait, I'm going to check. <laughs> oh, A ver, God, muchas. Sorry. Someone help para, please. Someone please tell her what the 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 the, the, the rule for placing sentence stress is. Alguien, el que sea, por the, favor. the major stress of the last content word. Yes. The major word stress of the last content word. Entonces. Um, so it's sugar because it's the last one. Uh-huh. And the, the last content word is sugar, right? 
pero el major word stress de sugar es shu. Shu. Ajá. Ok, ok. So okay. there, yeah, that's I'm where sorry. it goes. Va, a ver. Question on Pear Deck. I'm having too much fun with this today. Um, question on Pear Deck. What is, what should be the pattern for this? A very interesting thing is that you need to know that every single pattern has a rule. I mean, has every type of sentence falls within a pattern. No hay pierde. No hay dos respuestas. No podría ser otra cosa. It is what it is. Kind of like math. Dos más dos es cuatro. Eh, estamos perdidos, mucha. Some people are changing their answers. Okay. Va. So. Vamos a ver. García, Quevedo, Sanders, Perdomo, Puente, Escobar, Reanda, Lira, and Contreras. Please read the chapter again. Okay. Um, nombre. Nombre. Okay. Va. A ver. Well, I'm going to talk about patterns in a sec. I'll, I'll give you the answer. So this one, that's why I didn't show you the, 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 the pattern, okay? Uh, but the pattern is, looks like that. So it is exactly the same as the previous one. It's final rising. Too late. Those of you who got it wrong, you got it wrong because you don't know yet um, what sentences are fall into final rising, which you should because it's in the chapter. All right. Ala, ¿cómo se pudo regañón el teacher? I'm sorry. I thought, I thought that it was continuation, right? Because uh, of how I, it sounded in my head when I read it. So in my head, it sounded like, um, would you like cream and sugar? See, does, it, does anyone know when you use continuation, rice? In a list. When you're doing lists. Rodrigo, in this one, because I also wrote that, found that HW questions have that pattern. Is that, cons is that wrong? Like the uh, rising falling? Yes, it's wrong because uh, rising is for yes or no questions. It, it, but what, did I, would, would, what's the answer for would you like cream and sugar? What are the possible answers? Yes, no. Aha. Uh -huh. But like, so the answer, so, so if the answer is yes or no, it's final rising. If, if, so if it's a yes or no question, it's, so, it's final rising. Uh, so WH question. Final rising falling. WH questions, are, which are who, where, what, when, those are called <laughs> information questions. Like, for example, what's wow. your name? Yes. No, you can't answer yes or no to what's your name. You have to give information. So information questions are rising falling while yes and no questions are rising okay uh, next a uh, pair deck there you go next question there you go where is the matrix in this one where did he go last night All right. Dun, 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 dun. But I'm going to say, ah, people are still changing their answers. A ver, um, Morales, answer this for me. What are content words? Um, are the words that have meaning? What do you mean meaning? That 
Uh, I don't know. <laughs> Ala, pero clean on their own. Está bien, pero you should like be very clear with that. Pero let's, let, let me ask you a follow up question. What parts of speech are content words? They will not the mayor words us. Nouns? Nouns. Nouns, mayors. Okay. What parts of speech are content words? Nouns, uh, verbs. Okay. But so saying what you so nouns, verbs, adjectives, WH questions. Okay. Entonces, what's the last content word in this sentence? Morales. Morales. Night. So that doesn't make you want to change your answer? Yeah. For everyone, that's the answer. On screen. That's the last content word. Ahora, ojo, because if we're having a conversation, um, we might change that because we want to emphasize another fact, right? Within the sentence. I'll, I'll explain this when we go deep further. So let me just ask you another question on Pear Deck. Pear Deck's up. The question is, what, um, what, what would be the, the pattern for this? Andrea Mendez, you should get this one right. What you got, Mucha? You're doing really good with this one. <clears throat> bah. Mucha, read the chapter again. Like 15 of you, of you are a okay. And, and, and if you didn't read the chapter, at least you're paying attention today. Um, pero si, some of you need to reread the chapter. I'm gonna try and be nice and not point fingers right now. I, and I apologize to those of you who I pointed my finger to uh, in the previous questions. So here we go. Um, what would the contour need to look like for this? Boom. That's what the pattern looks like. Um, so if that pattern looks like that, then this should then be final rising falling. Okay. Um, Alguien que quiere hacerme alguna pregunta? Here. Like, why? No. Va. Carry on. I just yeah. want to ask you, you said, so just to be sure, all the WH questions are going to be final rising falling. Yes. Okay. Thank you. All WH questions también se llaman information questions. So all information questions or WH questions are rising, falling. Because of the thing you said that we cannot give a yes or no answer. Uh-huh. Only when it's a yes or no, does your intonation go up. Okay. And the yes or no questions are going to be final rising, right? Exactly. Okay. Thank you. Bueno. Mucha question on Pear Deck. Pilas, please. Eight people have already answered. I'm, I'm happy no one has chosen the final period as an answer. Us, question. Um, what parts of speech are function words? 
uh, noun, verbs, right? No. No, no, no. Uh, um, Those are content words, function words. So, so what parts of speech are function? Like prepositions, uh -huh. conjunctions. Uh huh. ¿Qué más? Mm. Anyone? I don't know. Truth? Pronouns. Pronouns. Yes, very good. Pronouns are uh, function words. Articles. A articles. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, so, Mr. Us, would you like to change your answer because of what oh. we were just talking? Okay. Because you know what? You know why? See, so if I take function words, let, let me do this just for function words. Function word, function word. Entonces tendría que ser uno de estos dos, these are content. So the rule says the last content word. Boom, that's where it goes. See? Just in the nick of time, everyone changed their answer. All right. Um, and that's what the contour looks like. See? And that would be final rising falling. I should have asked you that. Sorry, that was the next question. I'll I'll jump to the next question just for time. All right. Ora sí. Let's look at the sentence stress there. Very, very good answers, Mucha. Um, there's, there's, this is sort of the trick question, though, eh, because there's a, there's a very interesting point here. Um, this is a compound sentence. It has two sentences. He can go to the store is one sentence. He can't is the other. But is just the conjunction that we use here. But this is two sentences, really. So Pear Deck doesn't allow you to do this um to choose two answers but this one has two it should have two um two uh main sentence stress because it should have one sentence stress for the first sentence one sentence stress for the second sentence so that's what it should look like so all of you are right ding 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 Ahora. If you in a quiz, sorry, if you in a quiz or something asked us something like this, we should put the both of them, both of yes. them. Yes, yes. Okay. Um, so I'm, I'm not going to talk about something yet, but how about you answer this question for me? Next question on Pear Deck. Um, sorry, I mean, for the last sentence or for the first sentence? Aha, very good question. Yes, very good. 500 imaginary points for Ms. Contreras. Awesome question. Um, because it's two sentences, then it should have two patterns. Just like it has two main sentence stresses, it should have two patterns. Uh, answer either one. Okay. So if we just get answered the last one, just one, right? One of the two, yes. So you, you can okay. decide if you answer for this one or you can decide if you answer for this one. Porque Pear Deck doesn't allow us to, to choose two answers. Bueno, a ver, contour should look like this. Boom. Okay. Um, which this means that it so is... Both will be uh, uh, final race in fallen, both of them. 
right? Exactly. And what? And the no, 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 otra vez. The first one is non-final rising falling. Este, ve? That one? It's non-final. Why is it non-final? Because it's not at the end. Because it's not ending. Okay, yeah, understood. And then the last one, the final rising falling, then that one's at the end. It's a final, okay. Thank you. Okay, and there's a very interesting point here. There is a slight difference in the non-final rising falling than in the final rising falling. Usually, rising the final rising falling falls farther down than the non-final rising falling, okay? Um, we, we can talk about examples afterwards, okay? Last one. Ah, sorry, there we go. And then I'm gonna do, I'm gonna help you. Pero boom, you see that? Rodrigo? Yes, Ms. Parada. So we have two sentences there, so we can choose any of. Choose the first one or the second one and just give an answer. Any, okay, thank you. Pretty much every, I need two or three more people to answer. Um, well, I'm gonna point something out in, in a sec, but I, I, I sort of changed this a little bit. Um, those of you who said that the major sentence is in store, you're right. Um, but we also need a major sentence stress for the second part. Those of you who said it's in can, Technically, you would be right, okay? But I decided not to do this. I decided to do this. I decided to put it in he. Because I thought about saying it myself. And I thought, she can't go to the store, but he can. You notice how I said that? I, I use contrastive stress right there. And that's, I, I decided to do this just like to throw your mind right here. I can decide to use contrastive stress at any point. I could also say, she can't go to the store, but he can. You hear how that's different? It's, it's different, but he can, because I'm focusing on him. Or, but he can, because I'm focusing on the fact that he has the ability, okay? Um, so if I'm differentiating on the people, we're differentiating on the ability, or the non and the non-ability and the ability, then I would place my sentence stress um, in either one. Um, when I give you uh, answers, when I give you sentences like these in the uh, uh, celebration of knowledge, I will give you answers like regular, like not sentences like this, because this sentence can be tricky, right? But I would also accept this. I would also accept that. All right. Um, so, Rodrigo? yes, Miss Orbo. Uh, this would happen in the, in letter C too, right? I was if going to ask the same. Oh, uh, was my same question. Um, you could it, theor theoretically in any sentence you could um, emphasize you could another word. Emphasize another word, right? By the way, there's another question in Pear Deck while I explain this. Um, but for example, in, in C, for example, you say, where, where did you go last night? And the person says, yeah, yeah, um, they went to a party. And then you ask again, where did he go last night? So, uh, what place, right? Yeah. Not to what event, right? So at any sentence here, maybe not any sentence, but most sentences here, you can do contrastive stress. stress. You can do contrastive stress pretty much anywhere. You could, for example, I could say, she can't go to the store, but he can. See, so I'm, I'm emphasizing on the difference, but he can. Okay, thank you. Yeah, 
I kind of have an issue with that, Rodrigo, with, with, because I'm, I'm not too sure where to put the sentence stress. Like, if I follow the rules, then, I mean, of course, I will do what you're explaining now, right? Because it's a lot more clear. But if I uh, put the stress, the sentence stress, imagining how I talk, then it will go in different parts of the sentence. So I, I really don't know. Okay, let me just say this real quick. There, be, for everyone, before I answer for you, there is a question on Pear Deck. Answer that, please. Not everyone has answered. Uh, now, Ms. Cotton, if it's written down, then you have to assume to follow the rule. Follow the rule. But if it's spoken, like for example, mm -hmm. if we do a listening exercise, um, then you would have to do it according to what was said. Um, in this class, we're not going to have time to do spoken uh, exercises, all right? So what I'm saying okay. is, for the time being, follow the rule. And the rule says the last major word stress in the sentence. Okay. All right. All right. Thank you. Um, so again, that's the contour. And that's um the answer but let's let's talk about the the patterns real quick because this is like super important um so you have final rising which is for yes or no questions you have which which it's in the, all i'm just summarizing what's in the book so final rising is yes or no question. Uh, final rising falling. So final rising looks like you have your major word stress, boom, goes up. What does it sound like? Um, do you understand? Uh, at the end, uh, right? Um, are you happy? Like the little kids in the in the video that you watched, the little baby was an na 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 na, and then the the other child would an na 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 na. So every time you go ah at the end, um, that's final rising. Um, then you have final rising falling. So you have the sentence stress, and it just it's called rising falling because your intonation goes here. Then you rise it a little bit and boom, it goes down. That's what you. You're, sorry, uh, a question. So for the final raising, it's only going to be yes, no questions. No statements, no other, just, just no correct. questions, right? Yes, correct. Okay, thank you. Um, okay, so for the final rising falling, is it means I'm done. Da -na 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 -na. Y punto, right? So I'm doing that. We do it the same in Spanish, right? And in English, final rising falling is um, statements and information questions. Do you, uh, do you understand? Who can explain this to me? See? Da -da 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 -da. So if, you, if I need more information, um, what is your name? No, no es, what is your name? See? Um, fine, thank you. And you? And you? That's the correct intonation. Even though students say, fine, thank you, and you? If you've ever been in a classroom of everyone answering. But in theory, that, that contour, that, that pattern should go down. Right? Information questions go down. Yes or no questions go up. But non-final rising falling is when you have compound or complex sentences. The difference between compound, and, you, you guys are taking grammar, right? But I don't know if you've seen the differences between compound and complex sentences yet. Um, compound sentences basically are two uh, independent clauses put together while complex sentences are dependent clauses put together. Um, this is not a grammar class, but anyways, when you have 
I see, I'm, I'm gonna do this because it might have a comma, it might have a, a conjunction or it might have something. So the non-final rising falling is the first one. Yes, I see. Which usually the second one, so I'm gonna do this. I'm not talking about this one, but the second one um, goes like, boom. See, so this one ends kind of like right here and the other one ends like, I've finished. Um, Rodrigo, sorry to interrupt. Right. Would that normally indicate uh, whenever there's a, some sort of conjunction in, in the sentence? Right, so like in other words, like, like a simple conjunction, like um, when there's a conjunction, like the word, last word that it were previously would have a non final rising and then when you every time you put a conjunction in, in a sentence there's there's a pause there's there's a pause either before the conjunction or after the conjunction um and and at that pause is where where that contour that that intonation is coming down okay and then it, it and it sort of tells like this is one part hold on i still have more to say this is my last part. Hmm. Okay. So that's sort of how it works. Uh, but you may have, um, I think your book has a sentence that says, the man you say you met yesterday has left town. You, you, did you hear that pause? And there's, there's, no co there's no comma there, but I make a pause. The man you say you met yesterday has left town. So I make that pause and my contour closes. And then I finish the sentence. Okay. Um, so there might be a comma, there might be a conjunction, or, or there might be nothing, but it's two separate clauses. Um, bueno, continuation rise is very easy. Continuation rise is done for um, lists. And in lists, basically, you have, so for example, I'm going to go to the store. And I'm going to buy da, 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 da. Each one of those items has a major sentence stress because you're focusing on each one of those items. But your intonation rise goes, your, your continuation rise goes like that. And then on the last one, this is a continuation rise. But then on the last one, you do this. Let me give you an example. All right, um, you guys, I'm, I'm gonna stop sharing for a sec, okay? Because I need, and you guys need to turn your cameras on because I need to see you. Even if you are not that pretty today, all right? Um, even if you missed makeup, all right. <clears throat> so you're going to do this if I'm not finished with my list, and you're going to do this if I'm finished with my list. Okay? So not finished, like, because, and, and this means I, I left it open, rising, and then I closed it. All right? So this is closed, open. Okay. So I went to the store to buy tea. Um, Peanuts, whiskey, fruits, vegetables, rice. You heard that, right? So it's it's like a, 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 and when I'm done, a. That a, a, a. That's continuation rise. We also do it um, sometimes between two sentences. Um, like, for example, las mamás son re buenas para hacer esto. Si querés ganar el examen, I'm not finished. Hold on. Pay attention to me. Entonces tenés que estudiar. Right, that 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 also happens, and there's there's teachers that that use uh, a continuation rise uh, for students to answer. Um, 
what do I mean? Um, so for example, um, I don't know, imagine social studies. So the, the civil war started in the year, right? So they do, eh? it's kind of like, and it pushes students into answering. I hate it when teachers do that, right? Um, as a student, I hate it, right? Um, and, and it sort of makes teachers sound not very smart, all right? Um, it makes teachers sound. See, verá, o sea, es así que, ah, ¿qué? Va a decir algo más. No va a decir algo más. ¿Quiere que yo lo diga? ¿Por qué no lo dice usted? Um, anyways, so, um, but a lot of teachers, especially with little kids, that, that, that's the thing. Teachers that have little kids do this a lot. And I think it's okay with little kids, but I don't think it's okay with adults. All right? Um, anyways, so continuation rise. You got it, right? Um, let's, let's try one last one. Um, I went to the store and I bought light bulbs. I'm thinking of things that I have in the kitchen. Um, potatoes, pineapples, a book. See, it's, it's, it's very clear. It's very clear. And that's the continuation, right? So if, if you don't have a list or like the intention that you're going to, you, you see how uncomfortable that feels? It feels like, es que tiene que terminar. And that's why people answer. Because you leave them like in an uncomfortable situation of this is not finished. This, this needs an end. So people just throw themselves out there to be able to answer. Um, and that's pretty much how it works. Um, so, but yeah. when it's written, sorry. So when it's written, it's easy because you're going to always going to have an end, the last word, right? Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Because you, you, you're going to see that the last one is has end, right? Exactly. But when it's only speaking, then you will notice that different intonation. And then it happens that sometimes people, for some reason, um, they are speaking. Ya terminaste. Sí, sí, ya terminaste. Yes. And it leaves you with that. You didn't finish. Are you done? Uh -huh. Right. So, so that's it. Um, let me just finish with the tag questions. Tag questions, you should know what that is grammatically, right? Can someone give me an example of a tag question? I, I'll, I'll write this. What would be the tag question for this? Right? Uh, no. Aren't you? There you go. Aren't you? Aren't you? Okay. So how do you use intonation of attack questions? There's two ways. You can do rising or you can do falling. falling. The thing is, it changes the meaning completely if you go up or down. And that's where mm -hmm. intonation might actually be, um, it might uh, cause misunderstanding. So for example, um, uh, someone give me the one, the, the, the tag question for this. Don't you? Very good, you? thank you. Okay. But, so I'll start with that one, all right? So you like cookies, don't you? Am I asking you if you like cookies or am I telling you you like cookies? Asking, asking, asking. Versus you like cookies, don't you? See, it's, it's like, like aha, I know you like cookies, right? <laughs> aha, aha. See, let, let's, all right, let, let's do this. So you do this if I'm asking, you do that if I'm, so if I'm, if I take it up, if I do rising intonation, you do this. If I do falling intonation, you do that. See? 
You like cookies, don't you? Yes. Ding, ding. Very good. You like cookies, don't you? You like cookies, don't you? You like cookies, don't you? It's very, it, it should be very clear, right? Because it's like, eh? I'm like, that final is like, huh? But, so this is why this is the problem. For example, I can say, you're very smart, aren't you? What's that? You're very smart, aren't you? You know that we are. Yeah, it, it's, it's falling and I know that you're smart. Versus, you're smart, aren't you? You. That can sound very sarcastic too. I just insulted you. Exactly. <laughs> just by, by changing the, the intonation pattern at the end, I can insult someone. I just, I just told you, I don't know if you're smart, you're probably stupid. Right? I feel like when the the last word goes down, it feels like you're threatening something, someone. It sounds like a threat instead of a question. But no, but because I said you're smart, aren't you? Pila Sosa. When it's raised it into question and when it's so, so uh, what I'm going to say is, is this, if, if it goes up, I'm going to move this a little bit. And then I think Mendes wanted to say something. If it goes up, a, I'm, um, what would be the word? I'm, I'm asking. See, if it goes down, I'm confirming that I know that. Right. Um, you like cookies, don't you? And it's sort of like, like you use it for conversation. Uh, it's so normal in conversation. You like music, don't you? Right? Uh, because they're they're on their headphones and ah, you like music, don't you? Right? Um, Mr. Sanders. Um, so I'm uh, I'm I'm taking it from the example that I said since it was just a one word, um, like in the last part of it, it's just one word. There's no real way for that intonation to change. And mostly because it, like, I was just going over examples out of my head and it said, because all, when it's just one word, it's always going to be that yes and no answer. Your intonation will go da 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 da, -da and at the end it'll go, uh huh? Or it will go, uh. -huh. So when it's just one word, I, like, I'm trying to go through examples and most of them only go up. Like I can't really find one we're going down. Where it's where like there's a confirmation to it. I can't really uh, what with the tag questions. Yes, with tag questions. So like in the example that I said, like you're smart, right? Mm -hmm. If you just use one word in that last bit, it's always going to be asking the question. You can't really. If you confirm. use right, if you use right, yes, that would go up. Um, pero that's not a tag question. Tag questions are grammatical. Um, constructions of the same sentence and then you use them like that so for example you see like I just said like for example someone with their big headphones listening to music you go like you like music don't you it's just like a conversation it's like I know this and that this is the point right and and then the person it's just for conversation because the person the person will say yeah I do Oh, what kind of music do you like? Da -da -da, da -da -da, da -da -da. And then you started off a conversation, right? Yeah. Um, so that's that's any any sentence that you have a tag question. If it goes up at the end, you're asking, and you have to be careful if you're actually asking. But if you if you're just like, um, like we do this in Spanish, uh, like I just give you the example. So spilas la. Hmm. Versus, sos pilas, o no? Yeah. So the, the meaning changes, right? Uh, but in English, it, we don't need to change the word. We just need to change the, the intonation. intonation at the end. Bueno, muchacho, let's see. 
um, let's talk about this. Let, let, me, let me try and do this real quick. Um, this is exercise 90. And this is linking deletion and assimilation. Before I do this, um, hold on, let me stop here for a second. This week, I would like to offer an extra session for those of you who are interested in working on linking deletion and assimilation. I thought maybe we would do it on the same day we had agreed last time, which was a Wednesday at what time was it? Four? Five? What? Five. Okay. Wednesday, 5 p.m. See? Does anyone have issues with that? Lita was making faces. Yes, can it can be Tuesday. Who has, who has issues with Wednesday? Sorry, sorry. Who has issues with Tuesday? I have actually issues, but with the hour. <laughs> if it can be a little bit later. One? Maybe at six? You prefer at yeah. six. Six is better, I think. I yeah, think that would be great right to be Tuesday at six work at or six. later. Yeah. But Wednesday six? Later. No. Wednesday no. Tuesday. Tuesday and six? Tuesday six? Yes, please. Yes. Tuesday six. But does it let's leave it for Tuesday? Thank you. Okay. So let me um let me start explaining this uh real quick and and then we'll we're pretty much be finished i'll i'll keep doing this on wednesday um and there's there's an assignment for practice there are a couple of assignments there's little reading but there's practice um and and you can you can see there but you can ask me on wednesday if, if you if sorry tuesday tuesday at 6 p.m um I'll, I'll i'll have to remember that um so um, let's see, let's talk about linking deletion and assimilation. Let me just kind of like introduce the concept in linking, oh yeah, in the English language, you, cuando hablamos de, de scrunching up the, the sentences, connected speech, you put them together, like buir, right? Uh, so you put these together and then you have the individual words that when you speak them, they, they come together. So th these are like consonants and vowels, words, connected speech. See? But, so doing this is linking. Putting two words together is linking. So you take one word and the other word and you link them together. So when we're looking at linking, deletion, and assimilation, we're looking at what happens in that space between the, the initial and final sounds of the words that are being put together all right so linking is this deletion is this so it's basically i'm putting together but one sound gets lost like when we said give her a hand that h got lost right and it can be this or it can be this okay but a one sound or two sounds or sometimes like almost the whole thing, like when you're doing um, in conjunctions, you, you lose other things. So that's, that's a deletion. And an assimilation is doing this, but when you do this, something changes. Okay? So something just is not the same, but you put it together and then Maybe something you lost and maybe something changed, but that's an assimilation when, when something changes, like palatalization. So let me show you one example. <clears throat> and I think this, this example should pretty much tell us what we have. So to do this, let's look at what happens in the gaps between words. Aquí ve. Y ahí lo vamos a marcar en la oración, en la primera oración. So, esto no hay que hacerlo. The function words no hay que hacerlo, but I put it there so you can so we can see what's happening. Let me let me do this real quick. So, aquí había una d y ahora hay una y. Pero, hay, perdón, había una d y había una y. Y ahora hay esto, ¿eh? The sound changed. See, that is an assimilation. 
What happened in this gap? Vamos a ver. Eh, would ya... Ah, it's, sorry, this would have been, this had to be a shua, sorry. Eh, aquí no pasó nada, dejé el espacio. Entonces, I left the space. What happened here? Give him, give him. What happened? What happened? Sanders, I didn't hear you. Deletion? Yes, deletion, very good. ¿Por qué? Because I lost that H. I put it together and I lost an H. But what happened between these two? Nada, I left a space. And what happened between these two? Linking. Ahí están. There you have in that sentence, linking, deletion, and assimilation. Not every sentence has linking, deletion, and assimilation, but every sentence should at least have some sort of linking and may have deletion and assimilation. Let's, let's do this, the, the last one real quick. Um, what did he do last night? Bah. So what happens here? Can I say it? Yes, or both. Linking and assimilation. Solo es una. Y son como, como, en, como en reglas. So, okay. so if, if there's linking and deletion, va a ser deletion. If it's linking and assimilation, va a ser assimilation. If it's linking, deletion, and assimilation, then it's going to be assimilation. So it's assimilation. What changed? The D for the flap. Pero aquí está B. Es, no, aquí está. Uh, no, that's in the other one. That's deletion. That's deletion, yes, because I dropped that T. That's deletion. Ahora sí, entre estos. That, that is assimilation. Yes, that's assimilation. Because there's a deletion, but there's also a change. Y como son en... Eh, uno es más importante que el otro, it's finally an assimilation. Because there was a change. Okay? Um, then what happened here? Nah. So I leave the space. Sí, aquí. Ah, no, perdón. Perdón, sí, sí hay. What, what happened there? Vamos a ver. E do, yes, I just did linking. Sí. Linking. Ahora sí, aquí. Ahí es el space, right? That's just a space. I'm just marking the space. And then, aquí, what happened? Deletion. Very good. Ya vieron que fácil, muchachos. You got it. Um, so, I'm just going to show you real quick. Um, your assignment for next week, which maybe you don't need to see it though, but it's number 18. There's, um, it's this one, it's the practice. It's a worksheet that you need to do. No vale puntos, si quieren no la hagan, but I suggest that you do it. That's, uh, that's actually what we're gonna work with in Wednesday. Uh, on Wednesday. So if you if you don't want to do it and wait till Wednesday to do it, you can do it then. If you don't want to do it at all, you don't have to. Um, it's not for grade, but it is great practice. And I don't know if you've noticed that there's a final project recording. It's already there. Check it. Um, it's basically just a two minute, um, what's the word? Uh, a two minute vlog. Uh -huh. um, of anything that you want. It could be makeup, it could be, um, I don't know, it could be guns, it could be um, anything, anything that you want. It could be teaching, making material, um, I don't know, whatever you want. Um, as long as it's legal, it could be anything that you want. All right, so ladies and gentlemen, um, make sure uh, you have fun during the week and I'll see you Tuesday, 6 p.m. All right. See you then. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye. 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 B